So give us a flavor of how you see the roadmap now going for sure. you know digital fine print over the next uh, year or, or two years. Yeah. Is there some very, products that you're very, very excited uh, about, some data sets that you're very excited to work with? Yeah. Because now we're going to the era of open banking yeah. and you know there's going to be some coverages between it's insurance. Huge, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So give us a flavor on that. I would think of it in, in two ways. More, you need to think of both the external data but also the internal data that insurers use or should be using themselves. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of that moving to the cloud, which mm -hmm. allows for new ways of analyzing the data. One example we've taken recently is that we are now live on the app exchange for Salesforce. So that means Fantastic. that insurers who keep their data, their lead list and brokers as well, they mm -hmm. can use our insights directly in the Salesforce. It's super exciting. Mm -hmm. On the external data side, as you said, open banking is fascinating. A lot of new data is coming in from uh, Zero and Sage and other of the yes. accounting software. Yes, yes. So that, that would be a cool one to be mm -hmm. looking at as well. But for us, it's about making the data as accessible across other markets. We have contracts internationally now already, but we want to make the data asset as good in every country as it is in the UK or we're based. Without giving your secrets right out, right? you know, a, a lot of people talk about big data, small data in sure. a sense, right? So it's about understanding the ones that have the sentiment, uh, you know, within yeah. the, the KPIs that can drive actually actual pricing on the right and all that. Uh, give us some ones that you, you believe that you guys found as digital fine print yes. that people were not using and that's driving sentiments uh, and ones that maybe you can look at in the future sure. that you believe that there's sentiment there as well. Of course, I'll give you one example of where we tried to look at whether or not companies were doing well Mm -hmm. And you could see that from the sentiment in the language being used in press releases, in reviews, language and figuring analysis. out that from kind of Twitter. So imagine that you're kind of crowdsourcing all of the information about a company mm -hmm. and we're able to give that to our customers. So it's a fascinating right. data set that we've been able to put together and there's so much value that you can unlock from the insurance value chain by using those insights. Is there a, another one in the future that you got to look at saying, okay, this might be interesting and we're trying to figure out the actual sentiment within it? Or? So a lot of the data we look at today is in text formats. We use mm. natural language processing to read on websites. Mm. It would be really cool to start looking at both images but also moving ah, videos yeah, to figure yeah. that out. That's okay, but I'm hoping that you're going to say uh, something around image, something around voice, uh, it could be interesting, yeah. you, know, you know that. So on, on voice, uh, our CTO Geff came from Amazon. He was working on the Alexa product before, mm. so he was an engineering manager over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I keep joking that, you know, with my accent, I'm from Sweden, it never works because <laughs> Alexa can't understand me. <laughs> so then when I told you him mean, that... You could uh, understand me as well, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're fine. It's diverse as well. So that's the problem. So I keep telling Geff that, no, why didn't you solve that? And he said, well, I was going to, and then you recruited me to DFP, so now it's never going to work. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that became the difference of it. But I think that's definitely one venue of the future. If voice can work, if you can get better image recognition and these things, it's really fascinating. Now, Super Egg, before I let you go, always ask everyone here sure. that's joining us at GT Talks, what would they would like to see over the next years that will really accelerate the market, what would be meaningful for digital fine print or for the industry? Um, I, I'd say you won't wish we could have more than one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spread a magic wand. What would yeah, a magic there? wand, you know? Um, so most people would be saying that, oh, I would, uh, I hope it would take longer to go through, uh, shorter to go through procurement. I wish uh, insurers would be more open. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a bit controversial and say the opposite. I, I think and I hope that insurers would look at what the other ones are doing successfully. And the best mm -hmm. ones aren't the ones who just say no to all procurement. The mm -hmm. best ones are the ones who are very choiceful and actually go through all the work of partnering for the long term with companies. As I mentioned, we work with QB for two years. It mm -hmm. takes time to build a strong partnership, but mm -hmm. when you do, it can have massive amounts of value. Mm -hmm. So for the next year, I'm hoping that now that we have been working for years with many other, other companies, other insurance companies, will take note and start mm -hmm. realizing that there's value in the technology we're bringing. So I think it kind of happens over time. There becomes a bit of a snowball effect that you get bigger and bigger over time. Yeah. We've just done some crazy growth in the past year, and I'm forward to seeing even more in the next year.